the methodology started with essentially food support, consumption support, so that literally day-to-day -day survival was taken care of and that the families knew this would be true for a period of 12 to 24 months. Then they worked with the households on assessing skills and viable livelihoods that would work in the markets that were nearby and then training in those kinds of skills, whether it was chicken raising, goats, carpentry, sewing, depending on the context, and then transferring an asset, whether it's, again, a, goats and chickens, short-term and long-term assets, a sewing machine, tools, and then working with the households very intensively on a weekly basis for, again, anywhere from 18 to 36 months to say, we're going to establish new standards and norms and expectations on their part and very intensive coaching around changing aspirations, changing expectations, changing healthcare practices, trying to get the kids into schools. The randomized controlled trials were ultimately published in Science Magazine, um, which tends to focus on hard science. But the results were so positive that uh, science was quite interested in it. And the researchers found that the sequence of interventions was extremely successful, not just immediately, but one, two, three years later, in sustaining uh, viable livelihoods for the people who'd taken part. And then in a cost-benefit analysis, the fairly significant upfront cost was more than made up for by the longer term economic viability and reduction in subsidy for these households. What's I think unique about the graduation approach is that it, it merges aspects from three very distinct areas of development work. There's uh, th and those three being social protection, livelihood development, and financial services. Generally, most inter uh, development interventions are focused on one of those, and the experts in each area and the organizations that focus on each of those areas work fairly independently of one another. So to say that what's needed is not just a social protection of consumption support and ensuring um, survival, and what's not needed is just training in particular livelihoods, and what's needed is not just access to financial services, but an integration of the three and a careful sequencing of the three for the same households that are engaged, I think is what really distinguishes the graduation work and was really pioneered by BRAC in Bangladesh. Certainly the metrics are there of uh, over time measuring income, assets, child nutrition, children enrolled in schools, quality of housing, but what's been most striking, I think, is the people saying that <clears throat> they never imagined that they could live in any way beyond the horizon that they had been living in and that often had been going for generations, and that engagement in the program, and particularly these weekly coaching sessions with the program staff, changed their whole mindset and gave them hope and a reason to have hope and a sense of opportunity and that their children's lives could be significantly different than what their lives and their parents' lives had been. So I think that's that um, softer side of empowerment and sense of opportunity is uh, probably been the most uh, astounding response for those of us who, who've been working on it and the most positive um, for the participants in the program itself.